The numbers tell just part of this election night story, so here to put it all in perspective is our election and surveys director, Anthony Salvanto, who hasn't slept in four consecutive days. Uh, quickly in Arizona, when, when do we find out a winner on Arizona? Maybe a few days at least. Okay. They're uh, not done counting yet. Okay. Um, uh, record turnout, 114 million. First midterm, over 100 million, so a, a remarkable number. Which side does that help more? Right, almost half of all eligible voters. And you know what? I think it helped both because we saw turnout go up in those suburban districts that the Democrats had to flip to win the House. That helped them. But then we also saw turnout go up across rural areas. And that, I think, helped the Republicans hang on to and flip those Senate states across the Midwest. Okay. The president today at his, at his long news, the longest news conference of his presidency um, really praised the Republicans who... Uh, got closer to him, who he helped out then, and uh, criticized heavily those who did not embrace him. Th this is what the president said, and I want to ask you about this. Mia Love gave me no love, and she lost. Too bad. Sorry about that, Mia. And Barbara Comstock was another one. Peter Roskam didn't want the embrace. Bob Eugen, I feel badly, because I think that's something that could have been won. That's a race that could have been won. John Faso, those are some of the people that, you know, decided for their own reason not to embrace uh, whether it's me or what we stand for. It was a brutal session. I mean, he went down one by one on, these, uh, on some of these Republicans. From the numbers you're seeing, what do you make of those comments? There's no question the president was on voters' minds. More than two-thirds of voters told us so, either for or against him. But I think it was more widespread than that. When we looked across all the key districts, those key House races that we were watching, the average swing towards the Democrats was eight points from last time. So it was that widespread shift that really helped the Democrats swing the House, regardless of where that Republican candidate stood vis-a-vis -vis the president. What else did you learn yesterday about, about voters? Yeah, the biggest thing that struck me was the, was the gender gap. Women not only got elected, but they certainly helped propel the Democrats into the House. And what, so, and what does this potentially mean for 2020? Well, you know, I think the Democrats, we start to see them really consolidating their base in and around the suburbs and urban areas versus, again, those rural areas where Republicans have done so much better. That lays out an interesting landscape going into 2020. I would say so. All right, Anthony Salvanto, thank you again.